Arcadian Vanguard presents the Wrestling News in your daily wrestling newscast for Tuesday, October 18th, 2022. Good morning, I'm Mike Sempervivi. And we begin this morning with news on Paul Levesque. WWE's chief content officer and head of creative was not present last night at Monday Night Raw from the Paycom Center in Oklahoma City due to testing positive for COVID-19, according to PW Insider. Levesque was reported to be in contact remotely with WWE's producers and writers regarding the creative for Raw. Although reportedly feeling well and in good spirits, Levesque will be keeping away from his in-person duties until he clears WWE's company COVID protocols. Last night was the first Monday Night Raw that Levesque has missed since taking over WWE creative last July. PW Insider reported that last night's Raw was being run by WWE Senior Vice President of Live Events Road Dog Brian James, with assistance from writing team members Michael Hayes and Ed Kosky. Raw was broadcast live on the USA Network, and in the main event, Seth Rollins successfully defended the United States title against Matt Riddle, pinning him after a curb stomp following some accidental outside interference from Elias, who returned to Raw in the previous in-ring promo segment. Rollins was attacked after the match by Mustafa Ali, who had issued a challenge to the United States champ earlier in the show. The show opened with a physical confrontation between former U.S. champion Bobby Lashley and Brock Lesnar, whose assault on Lashley during last week's Raw cost Lashley the title and storyline. Two animalistic alpha males that won't give an inch, kicking off Monday Night Raw. Not not out here, Brock. Oh! Lesnar face first into the post. Oh, Oh, Lashley! Spearing Lesnar! Unbelievable impact! Get some help out here, thank God! The cavalry has arrived! What the hell is going on? The episode also featured an appearance by WWE Hall of Famer John Bradshaw Layfield, who officially welcomed Baron Corbin to Raw. So I want you, ladies and gentlemen, get on your sweat hog feet, put your little fat chubby redneck hands together, and welcome the greatest addition to Monday Night Raw in history, and that is Mr. Baron Corbin. Wow. Wow. Wow, JBL, thank you. Following JBL's introduction, Corbin defeated Dolph Ziggler. This was Corbin's first time using his old name of Baron, as opposed to the previous moniker of Happy Corbin since SummerSlam 2021. In what was discussed as a major upset, Dominic Mysterio pinned AJ Styles with outside interference from Mysterio's Judgment Day partners Damian Priest, Rhea Ripley, and Finn Balor. Styles' associates Doc Gallows and Carl Anderson were more successful earlier in the night, defeating the Alpha Academy when Gallows pinned Chad Gable. The show included special appearances by two NXT talents, tying into tonight's episode of NXT on the USA Network, as well as Saturday's Halloween Havoc premium live event. The first was Cora Jade, who recruited Rhea Ripley, formerly of NXT, to face Jade's former tag team partner Roxanne Perez tonight on NXT. Later, Cameron Grimes turned up and asked the OC to be his tag team partners as he takes on the schism. In other results, women's tag team champions Damage Control defeated Raw Women's Champion Bianca Belair and Candice LeRae when Dakota Kai pinned LeRae, and The Miz laid out Dexter Loomis with a steel chair on the entrance ramp before their match even began. The match was advertised with the stipulation that if Loomis won, he would get a WWE contract. Moving over to AEW, AEW Dynamite will take place tonight at the Heritage Bank Center in Cincinnati, broadcast live on TBS. The show was moved from its regularly scheduled Wednesday night time slot due to Game 1 of the American League Championship Series, airing tomorrow night on TBS. The rescheduling once again pits Dynamite for one week only, head-to-head on cable against WWE's NXT, airing at the same time on the USA Network. According to a report from WrestleTix, 4,031 tickets had been distributed for Dynamite at the Heritage Bank Center as of Saturday night, with 1,114 remaining available and 240 being distributed since WrestleTix's last report three days prior. 
AEW is also set to produce a documentary TV series with Warner Brothers Discovery, the company that airs AEW programming weekly on TNT and TBS, according to a report yesterday from Fightful Select. The show will focus on a core group of AEW wrestlers, following them on the road and in their weekly efforts to win or hold on to titles. Shooting is reportedly starting at the November 2nd Dynamite tapings in Baltimore and will continue through the December 14th Dynamite taping in Garland, Texas. AEW talent were given the option to participate. The show will be a collaboration between AEW and Warner Brothers Discovery, with Tony Khan as one of the executive producers. The announcement follows an interview given last week by Warner Brothers Discovery, U.S. Network's group chair and chief content officer, Kathleen Finch, who told The Hollywood Reporter that the company was looking to work with AEW on content that goes beyond the wrestling ring. The new show is expected to debut in 2023, but the specific date has not been announced. In ratings news, WWE SmackDown on Fox last Friday night from the Smoothie King Center in New Orleans drew an average of 2.274 million viewers, according to Showbuzz Daily. That's a 1.38% increase from the previous week's 2.243 million viewers. For the 14th week in a row, the show came in at number one in the 18-49 year old demographic on network TV for the evening, scoring a .54 rating, which was even with the previous week's rating, according to WrestleNomics. The taped edition of AEW Rampage that aired later in the evening wound up drawing a larger audience than the live edition of Rampage from the week before. The episode broadcast on TNT from the Coca-Cola Coliseum in Toronto brought in an average of 458,000 viewers, up 13.37% from the previous week's 404,000 viewers, according to Show Buzz Daily. The number also showed a 30.76% increase in viewership in the key 18-49 to 49 demographic, jumping to number 9 for the evening on cable TV from number 20 the week before. The episode showed a 20.76% drop in total viewership from the same week in 2021 and 29.16% drop in the key demo. In news related to last week's Triple Mania event from AAA in Mexico City, former AAA Mega Champion and current number one contender to the title Kenny Omega was prevented from sending in a pre taped video promo for the show, according to AAA Head of Talent Relations Conan. Conan discussed on the latest edition of his podcast, Keeping It 100, that he had reached out to Omega so he could contribute a promo challenging the winner of Triple Mania's main event between Mega Champion El Hio Del Vikingo and Ray Phoenix, but Omega was prohibited for legal reasons, alluding to his AEW suspension related to the backstage brawl during the all-out press scrum in which Omega was allegedly involved. Omega was suspended by AEW along with the Young Bucks and CM Punk, who were also involved with the all-out brawl. According to a report on the AAA situation from Figure 4 Online, Omega's AEW suspension prevents him from appearing for any other wrestling promotions as well. And one correction from yesterday's newscast, we mistakenly referred to the arena in Detroit as the Joe Louis Arena as opposed to the Little Caesars Arena. The Little Caesars Arena was built in 2017 and has been the home of the Detroit Red Wings ever since. Their old building, the Joe Louis Arena, was opened up in 1979 and began being torn down in 2019. We apologize for the error. And before we leave you today, we'd like to remind you that however you consume your content, you can find the wrestling news 24 hours a day and 7 days a week across social media. On Twitter, follow us at Wrestling News AV. Our Facebook page is also Wrestling News AV. The Wrestling News can also be found on the Arcadian Vanguard YouTube page. And for those who utilize Amazon Echo devices, just tell Alexa to play the Wrestling News podcast. And remember to make sure you add podcast at the end. Once again, for daily updates, breaking news, and more, follow the wrestling news across social media. And that's the news for today. If anything happens, we will be here to tell you about it. No clickbait, no paywall, just the wrestling news. The Wrestling News is a division of Arcadian Vanguard, and the Wrestling Newscast is a production of the Arcadian Vanguard Podcast Network.